This is the CSH-8L Mark II Furuno Omnidirectional Sonar. What makes the Omni special is that it's a very high power, 360 degree omnidirectional sonar that's transmitting a very, uh, very powerful pulse all the time, 360 degrees around the boat. We have a detection range uh, in excess of 5,000 feet in perfect conditions. And we have a, a very significant, yeah, very significant market share uh, throughout tournament winning boats in the United States and through the Caribbean as well. Things started rolling about three years ago with uh, Atlantic Marine Electronics and our partners at, at Viking Yachts and have just kept rolling from there. So we have a, a very significant number of fittings on the East Coast, the Gulf of Mexico, several in California, uh, many fishing down in Costa Rica uh, and all throughout Latin America as well. So we started off with a, a number of other predecessor series, came out with the 8L, we sold a number of those, they started catching on. Uh, came out with the 8L Mark II, some video refinements, a little bit of menu refinements as well. So we've been uh, selling these really hot for about three years and, uh, and, and have over 200 in the market. So yeah, so it's, uh, it's rapidly proven itself and yeah, you see some of, the, you know, some of the highest end guys, some of the most competitive guys in the sport fish market. Uh, we had recent return uh, out of the tournaments in, in Los Cabos. Uh, we had, I think, second day of the tournament, three of the top five boats in the tournament uh, were 8L users. And I think for the entire tournament, all the money winners, like uh, eight out of 10 boats had 8Ls. Fishing across the board, uh, obviously a big concentration on billfish and sailfish. Um, lots of marlin uh, boated with these. Uh, lots of lots of great big cardboard checks won in tournaments. But we uh, this really emerged from the deep sea commercial fishing industry. So the you know where these guys normally live is going to be on boats maybe 200, 300 feet long or even larger. But we have managed, as you can see, what AMEs managed to do and what Vikings managed to do is they've come up with an installation for yachts down to about 60 feet in size. Um, and they, they just... We've been building Omni sonars for over 40 years. We've got a lot of practice, whether it's the Japanese commercial fishing industry, uh, commercial fishing in Alaska, commercial fishing in New England and, and Northeast United States. Uh, and we've adapted that technology. Normally what Furuna will do is we'll start really big and then we'll shrink the technology down. And you can see we've, we've shrunk it about as far as we can go. It's not a small installation, uh, but we can, we can get into the sport fish and mega yacht market. It's real time. We're getting multiple scans per second, um, and we're getting the, we're getting that omnidirectional pulse. So we're up we're updating the screen about five times a second. Uh, we have real time ability to detect fish, target fish, uh, and we have a target lock feature as well. So really, no matter where the fish is going to be in the water column, from plus five degrees looking up into the surface clutter, or even looking all the way down and using it as a as an echo sounder we're pretty well guaranteed to find the fish. And then when we've got the proper navigation inputs there, what we're able to do is we're able to use that target lock and then we can automatically train and tilt the center of the sonar to stay on that big target game fish. And we've got a really good ability to correlate what we see on the sonar screen with an echo sounder, with a conventional down sounder. So we can get guys, we can get guys on the fish from a really long ways away and then we can get them directly over the fish so they can see it on their down sounder and they can really, they can get their lures directly, almost directly in the fish's mouth. This model is, uh, is pretty well what we would see installed on a Viking. You can see that we're gonna have a, a hull tube. Everything's really gonna start with the hull tube. So this is a fiberglass hull tube. We offer one and 1 1.8 meter lengths. The hoist mechanism here will, uh, We'll get this going. So you can see the hoist mechanism in, in action. Uh, the standard hoist is 600 millimeter. This is a little bit more standard on Viking. This is a 400 millimeter. You can see the transducer comes out below. And if you come down just a little bit, you can see that there's a, a Delrin or a nylon collar right under there. That's to avoid lines getting wrapped around the shaft. So the main components of the sonar, here we've got the transducer with the shaft in the tube. We've got our hoist mechanism of two different lengths. Then down here, we've got the transceiver box, this big guy right here, the processor box right here. And that, so we're gonna come off the hoist into the transceiver, transmit receiver mechanism, do our signal processing in this box, and then it's all gonna be controlled 
by a nice compact little keyboard here that uh, AME and Viking have done really nicely antique. And then if we come over here, we've got a little promotional video going on up here. This is what we would see as really what a lot of guys are referring to as the underwater radar. Sure. So you can see that we've got a, a PPI, a plan position indicator. We're able to see the elements of where our, uh, where our cursor are, transmit on or off, whether we're stabilized, range, when we talk about range, we can talk about the, the maximum of 5,000 feet, but really where we're seeing tournament guys use this is going to be about 1,500 feet range so that they're able to pursue the fish and get on them. Um, and then they're able to walk that range in and, and get right on the fish. We're always excited about our technology and, and you know, we want to we wanna believe everything that everybody tells us. We've had some great stories out of the Gulf, particularly rig fishing guys that have gone out around rigs and guys fishing in tournaments as well. Um, we have guys calling fish for other boats. So if they're out there, they might be 800 or 1,000 feet away. They might be in excess of 1,000 feet away. And uh, we've heard a number of stories from Costa Rica and from Gulf of Mexico as well, where a, a, a skipper will be looking at his 8L and he'll say, you know, he'll call his buddy on the radio and say, hey, you've got to fish 200 feet off your port side. And they nail him pretty much every time. We had, uh, had one gentleman in the show. This is the second day of the Fort Lauderdale show. Had a gentleman come in yesterday. He said of, uh, of 50 fish around the boat, he managed to see 45 of them and was able to count individual fish. Absolutely works on school fish. Really, the, the origin of the Omni was for uh, great big schools, uh, schools or shoals of fish, whether it was sardine, mackerel, herring. Uh, the great big fisheries like that in South America and in, in the Asian market. And over time we've adapted it, and, but we absolutely can target individual fish. Yeah, absolutely they can. Wait, I don't want to you know, completely oversell the technology. It is possible to lose target lock, but we do have that target lock feature. And again, because it's omnidirectional, because it's transmitting in all directions all the time, as long as you've got the, the center of the beam tilted where the fish are, you're going to have some kind of target return. When we talk about underwater radar, it's not just underwater radar. When you think about a radar image, you're just looking at boats on the surface of the water. This is not just underwater radar, it's underwater three-dimensional radar. So learning to think not, not just what's around you, but where it is in the water column in a, in a vertical mode, that can be a little bit challenging. Uh, we've, we generally see captains get really well dialed in on them, certainly within a season. Um, we, do, we also do some training. Uh, Atlantic Marine Electronics has done training. Viking has done training. Uh, their demo captains uh, are, are very well dialed in on the product, so they can perform training as well. Um, but I do have a couple of sonar specialists who will travel to boats for a fee. Um, and if we, can get, if we can get one good day underway, uh, we'll take a guy from total beginner, total novice, to you know, fairly competent user. We really enjoy our relationships, I mean, really across the United States. Uh, each of the fisheries is a little bit different. It's a one style of fishing and one group of guys on the East Coast. Some of those guys will migrate into the Gulf, uh, super good relationships in the Gulf. The San Diego guys are a little bit different, the guys that fish on the Pacific side in Costa Rica. Um, but yeah, everybody's really wringing the, the, the most effort out of this tool. Yeah, having a navigator, so if, if, we, if we use the analogy of, of how it works in big tuna fishing or big school fishing, yeah, normally you will have a guy who's, whose job it is to look at the sonar and he's either going to be looking at the sign or he's going to be listening to the return because there is an audible return from the fish. And he's going to tell his fish master, he's going to tell his skipper which way to turn to get on the fish. We have seen some fishing teams doing this. Uh, sometimes captains like to run it themselves and sort of keep it as their secret sauce. Sometimes they'll have a crew member and he's pretty glued to it. Um, we see some other, you know, a, a West Coast fishing team like Team Bad Company, guys like that will use sonars in combination with, uh, with gyro-stabilized binoculars. So there's lots of different ways. Um, but yeah, having somebody paying attention to the fish, especially when you're hot in the bite and especially when you're in a, a group of boats, yeah, it's really important that, that somebody is, is honed in on that display. So even though we talk about the, the, the underwater 3D radar being a complex tool, it's really not that difficult to learn. The, the thing that I most appreciate about working with professional captains and professional crews, they've been in the area a thousand times before, they've had their rigs in the water a thousand times before, they know what the fish behavior is like, 
this is going to be a tool that's going to allow you to understand why the fish are where they are and why they act how they act. We've seen, we've seen captains come away with a, a much better understanding, not just of, of the fish behavior, but the grounds that the fish are in. They can see things like weed lines, they can see temperature rips, they can see thermoclines, and they, can, they, they start to get a much better understanding of why the fish are in a certain place when they're there.